Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from Weather is your captain of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about this week in weather from last week, and of course, what's coming up here. A lot to talk about. We'll start out taking a look here at the... Um, a major ice and snowstorm here, which hit uh, the, port, the uh, central and lower plains into Missouri and the Ohio Valley. Most of what fell in Texas and Oklahoma, uh, a lot of that was ice. Uh, it ended as snow, but a lot of ice in there. Also, it's also the case in Missouri. They got pounded with heavy ice, and then they got several inches of snow. The big snows clearly were, um, we had some in the central Colorado, the range there, into north central Nebraska, uh, New Mexico, but the big snows, eastern Missouri, St. Louis, Jefferson City, then up into uh, Springfield and uh, Peoria and uh, Normal, Decatur, Champaign. They all got slammed pretty good. And then up in the Chicago suburbs, uh, quite a bit of difference between the north side of Chicago versus the south side of Chicago with the snowfall. And then in central Indiana, northern Indiana, got hit southern Michigan. A lot of areas, uh, 10, 12, 15, 16 inches of snow. And the snow continued up into... Um, uh, I guess the Ohio Valley, uh, the northwest Pennsylvania, western and northern New York State, and uh, New England. And now, of course, if you remember a couple of days ago, the operational GFS had a big uh, ice and snowstorm in Boston and southern New England, had heavy ice down to the central New Jersey and Pennsylvania. That turned out to be complete bullshit. And the reason for that, we'll get to that in just a second. It was obvious that the GFS was wrong because the GFS was violating a very key principle of meteorology the uh, synoptic scale principle. So uh, we'll get to that in just a second here. And this was also uh, the uh, storm from last week, the uh, big east coast uh, snowstorm and blizzard for portions of Delmarva, New Jersey, eastern Long Island, and uh, eastern New England. Uh, not much in here in Virginia. Again, nothing fell really of significance in and around the Richmond metro area. Pretty good snow down there in Hampton Roads and uh, Port, uh, southern Maryland as well. And then also some decent moderate snow with initial overrunning a few inches here in portions of West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, Southwest Virginia. But again, as usual, Central Virginia didn't get bupkis. Okay, this was the upper air map uh, from February 3rd. This is the system here which caused the storm to form um, yesterday before. And this here is your big ridge bringing up the warm air, which is why we had 50s and 60s. So the low pressure area was going to be tracking like this up the front. You see that? Now, the problem here is that when the low is tracking up the front, it is driving the warm air ahead of it as the cold air is coming south. So the GFS solution of driving the cold front all the way into New Jersey while the low is coming up the front was not meteorologically sound. And that's why it overdid the snow and the ice and why I called bullshit on it on the Twitter page and it turned out to be correct. I mean, there was a little bit of ice in portions of Boston and Connecticut, New Jersey, New York City. For the most part, it was a rain event. And everything was like uh, north of, I guess, uh, Connecticut, really, and almost by Albany. And you go back, you see where it was there. Most of the snow was north of Albany. Now, that's not what the data was showing only 36, 48 hours ago. So that's quite a bit of a change. And again, like I said, it's because the low comes up the front. Okay, now, if we had blocking in Canada, oops, charge about that. If we had blocking here in Canada, okay, negative NAO, if we had a uh, negative uh, Arctic oscillation and the ridge was flatter, then the low would have come up the front as it was advancing. And then the cold air gets into you and then the precipitation hits and now you're off to the races with snow and ice. But that's not what we had here. So that makes a big difference. Okay. Now, this was the system coming out here on February 4. And again, you can see the ridge is very strong and we have a positive Arctic oscillation with positive uh, NAO, Greenland block. So that's one of the reasons why the ridge was so strong. Okay. Now, the next event coming up here is something for Monday and Tuesday. Now, the problem is that there's just not enough cold air to keep this a snow event. So this is the GFS here. This is the brand new one early Saturday morning. You can see the low. Uh, it forms over Georgia, southern Georgia, Florida. It comes up the old front, but the temperatures aren't cold enough to support snow. And uh, that's what the GFS is showing. And it's been showing it for the last couple of days. So the cold air is essentially gone after Sunday. This here is the European from uh, uh, Friday evening, 18-0. Now here we can see there is some snow here. You can see it here and a lot of rain and a little bit of snow mixed in. in the after, this is in the evening hours. So here you have at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 
it's snowing, but in the evening when it's supposed to be colder out, it's not. And what the problem here is uh, with the system has to do with the upper air pattern. So this is the upper air map for February 7th. You see that? So here's our ridge. You see the big ridge here in the orange. All right, and here's our piece of energy in the southern jet stream. But notice this specific air. This is not coming out of Canada, Alaska. See that? This is not coming. We have a vortex here. We don't have a big ridge. This is Pacific air. So that's the first problem. So you don't, the air mass is not cold air to begin with. And the other problem is that you don't get any phasing so between the streams. And the result is this. So you see here, you've got one piece of energy here and another one here. Now, if these two pieces of energy were to meet, you get a much bigger storm on the East Coast and you get a snowstorm. But that's not going to happen. Notice the shape of the ridge here. See the ridge here? See this? Now compare that to the previous slide. See the difference in the shape of the ridge? Now you're getting cold air coming in. This here is the cold front bringing into the cold air in, but they're 24 hours apart. That piece of energy here and this piece of energy here are 24 hours apart, and that's why you don't get your big storm. Okay, and if you look at the 850 temperatures here, there you go. Remember, 850, one mile above the ground, it has to be zero degrees centigrade or colder for snow. So if we take a look at Richmond, we see plus two. Well, that's rain. Now, Roanoke is minus one, Charlottesville is zero, DC is zero. They have the possibility of seeing snow and or rain. Uh, but Raleigh is plus two. Danville is plus one. Uh, Farmville zero, maybe there. Yeah, okay. Uh, Fredericksburg is plus one. That's all rain. Sorry. Uh, Salisbury, Atlantic City. If it gets up this far, this is rain. And it's, we have to get the air a couple of degrees colder. And that's not going to happen. Now, beyond this event, if we look longer term, it doesn't look great. Now, one of my competitors continues to bang the horn that February is going to be a February to remember it's going to be really rocking like January a lot of storms and snow and cold and I got to call bullshit on that boys and girls uh, that doesn't look like it's going to happen so uh, remember it, now who just keep in mind here who's calling a lot of snow and cold and storms in February and who's saying be careful okay I'm not saying no activity but it's not going to be January we had a lot of activity in January. So if you think February is going to be like January last month, you're, you better prepare for disappointment. Again, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just saying be careful. Okay, here is uh, the Arctic Oscillation. Let me call up an hour here for you. And you can see again um, that, oops, there we go. There we go. So uh, here, this here is the Arctic Oscillation. And we can see it goes out till the end of January. And notice the trend. It was negative right now, but it goes strongly positive. And by the time we get to February 20th, it's moderately positive. See that? It is moderately positive. Okay, this is February 20th. See that? That's not good. Now, this here is the NAO, the Greenland block. Okay, right now, the black line shows it's neutral. See that? And then look what happens. It dips down a little bit February 11th which is when we have our next chance of something significant. And then it takes off positive again, strongly positive, plus three, plus four. Okay, not good. So now we go to the uh, Pacific side of things. Here's the PNA, the West Coast Ridge. And we can see that right now it's positive. It's the black line shows it's, you know, solidly negative and it's pretty neutral. And then, but uh, well, for the next 10 days or so, seven to eight days, and then starts going negative again. Well, that means a trough on the West Coast. You don't want to see that. So February 20th, things are beginning to go downhill. And here's your Eastern Pacific Oscillation. And here you can see it's pretty close to neutral uh, all the way through February 20th. So it's not negative, it's not positive. It's around neutral, which is better than being positive. So that's decent, that's okay. But of the four of them, Two of them are terrible. One is neutral. I mean, all three of them, actually three of the four are bad, really. It's not great. Now, if we look at the MJO, we can see that the MJO here, you can see the blue arrow, is in the neutral circle about to go into phase three. And you can see here, here's the MJO in phase three. This is the CFS on the left. Here is the, uh, G, the, the GFS ex, uh, ensemble on the right. Look at the green. See the green lines here, the yellow lines? See that? All going into phase three, okay? And here is um, the European doing the same thing by mid-February, February 17th, and they also Australians into phase three. So all the models agree the MGO is going to go into phase three in the middle of February. All right, well, what does that mean? Well, this is phase three in, um, uh, in, in La Nina in February. 
Now, we have a big trough in the Pacific Northwest, so that's not good. But we also have a trough off the southeast coast of Canada and a pretty strong blocking signature in Greenland and a strong a block in, Arctic, in the Arctic Oscillation. So this, is a, this implies a negative NAO or Greenland block and a negative Arctic Oscillation. Now, there is a bit of a ridge over Florida. So this is not an ideal pattern for winter storms in the eastern United States, but it's not terrible. If that block is that strong in Greenland, we've got possibilities. OK, so um, for, uh, for, for, for a storminess. Now, the problem here is that I don't know how cold this pattern is because you're not getting any flow coming in from northwest Canada. You have a huge trough there. So this might be Pacific air. So it could be a lot of rainstorms. But there is got some possibilities here for activity in February. And if we go into phase three, it's not terrible. Now, here's the uh, uh, February 11th. This is our next big chance. And again, let me call up a good arrow here so you can see it. Here we go. And we can see that uh, there is uh, your trough right here. See it? See the blue line, the trough here? OK, there's your ridge. Now we have a there's your polar vortex. So again, you have not great NAO, not great Arctic Oscillation. We have this trough. There should be some sort of low pressure right here along the Carolina coast forming. This is February 11th. And indeed, there's something which shows up on the GFS here. This is the 18Z run. It's not a big system, but it's something. And then this here, now this is February 12th. There may be a system behind it. It might be this is the wrong one. The GFS is jumping on the wrong feature. This one is different. Uh, the 18Z has the piece of energy See if I can call it up here. You go. Actually, yeah. oops. <laughs> Let me fix that one. Sorry. You go. There you go. You can see uh, the uh, there's your ridge here. See the ridge on the west coast. That's a very strong ridge. Look how this is very amplified. Now this is pulling down cold air. This is bringing down the cold air finally from Canada. So the cold air definitely returns here by February 10th. A, a sustained cold flow. Now you've got a disturbance here in the northern jet stream. You see that kink in the isobars, and then you have one here in the southern jet stream. If these two features meet, and you do have a very nice 50-50 low here in southeast Canada, these two features meet, you would have a nice, significant east coast winter storm around February 13th or 14th. So that's a something, to, you know, again, to watch out for. It's not showing up in the models yet at all. This here is the uh, European, uh, February 12th. Again, it's got mostly energy by the Great Lakes. The GFS has more to, along the coast, but neither system is particularly impressive. But like I said, this one on February 13th, 14th, that might be their biggest system. So we'll see. Okay. This shows up here. This is the uh, GFS ensemble. Excuse me. This is the European ensemble. You can see right there, EPS. Valid February 12th. There's the trough right here. You see it? See the trough there? Okay. Nice big ridge here in the red. You can see that very clearly. Let me uh, shrink this. It's not shrinking down here, Gary. There you go. And then, of course, you have your vortex right here. Um, so that's a nice looking map. Now, if we go beyond that, this here is 282 at February 16th. Once this trough is gone here, once this trough is gone, all right, then the pattern begins to relax a little bit. We have a bit of a ridge forming in the eastern United States. The polar vortex goes to Greenland, so the NAO goes strongly, strongly positive. So does the Arctic Oscillation. And then you have this big ridge here on the eastern Pacific. So that's not great. The ridge, which was on the west coast, goes back into the eastern Pacific. And that places your mean trough in the Rockies, which means you get a ridge on the east coast. So there you go. Now, this is the European here, 348 hours out. This is February 19th. This is a ridge off the east coast. This is a warm pattern. You have uh, the ridges out here by Alaska. So, And the vortex is way north in Greenland. So all your cold air is now trapped in Canada. This is a Pacific mild pattern which overruns the country by February 18th, 19th, or 20th. This is not good after February 15th. And we go beyond that. This here is the, um, bring it down. This is the GFS uh, in, um, yeah, extended. This is GFS 324 hours out. Now it's a little colder than the European than here. It's a little colder than these maps, but it's still, it's not a great pattern. Um, so it's not as warm as the European. So hopefully the GFS ensemble is more correct. But again, even if this is correct, look at Greenland. Look at the Arctic Oscillation. It's all positive. I mean, it's kind of a trough on the East Coast, but it's nothing to write home to mom about. 
it's just not impressive. And then we go beyond that. This is now the GFS extended model, which came out yesterday. And this is now for the end of February, beginning of March. The urgent polar vortex is very strong, but look at the trough. It's on the west coast. It's the southwest Canada, the Rockies, the west coast. You got a ridge here in the eastern United States. This is the end of winter if this is right. This is the end of the winter season. This is right. Once this trough goes back out here, it's over. Now, I'm not saying this is correct. I'm saying that's what the model is showing, okay? That's what the model is showing. That's not what DT is saying. That's what the model is showing. Uh, and this here is the CFS uh, extended as well. Same thing. Look at the same idea. Big trough, big trough, big trough, big trough on the West Coast. And if you look at the ridge on the eastern United States. Again, end of February, last week of February, beginning of March. If this is correct, that's what that's saying. Not saying it is. Okay. Now, if we go beyond that, this here is the uh, EPS. I want to show you the trend here on the European Ensemble. Okay, so you can see the Arctic Oscillation here. And let me call up a nice arrow. Let me bring this one over. You can see it. Okay, this here is your... Look at the trend here. Arctic Oscillation. All 50 members of the European model Ensemble. There's all 50 members. Look what happened by February 15th. Look how extremely positive it is. Off the charts. Plus 5, plus 5, plus 4, plus 5, plus 5. Everywhere. Okay, after February 15th. If this is right, I mean, you'd say it's big cold Arctic outbreaks will come to an end. That doesn't mean it's going to get warm all the time. I'm just saying the threat for major big cold Arctic outbreaks will be over after February 15th, if this is right. Uh, this here is um, the EPS here for the NAO. Same sort of thing. Look what happens after February 15th. Let me shrink this down a little bit so you can see it. There you go. February 15th. And again, look how strongly positive it is. Really, really. And again, the only time it's not strongly positive is around February 11th when we get that possible East Coast storm. That's the only time it is, it is uh, neutral. The only, same thing here. The Arctic Oscillation, but the NAO in particular. Okay, and this here is uh, the PNA pattern, the original West Coast. Again, let me shrink it a little bit so you can see it more. And uh, look what happens here. By the end of the month, look at the greens. It goes persistently negative after February 15th, which means a trough on the West Coast and a ridge in the eastern United States, which restricts cold air flows and is not favorable for East Coast winter storms. Okay. Anyway, that's the presentation. That's this week in weather. Uh, again, I'm not saying the winter is going to come to an end after February 15th. I'm telling you that's what the data is showing. I happen to think the data may be correct, Okay, uh, that doesn't mean it's going to turn always warm. It doesn't mean no more cold air. I'm talking about sustained cold air outbreaks and patterns which are favorable for big East Coast and snowstorms. The pattern becomes hostile, according to the data, after February 15th uh, till the end of the month for that. So again, if you think February is going to be just like January, like some other private sector meteorologists are saying, you're going to be strongly disappointed. We got some chances here, but not a lot. This is meteorologist DT for weather risk. I will see you over on the Twitter page and over on the Facebook page.